going to take a wee look at the artificial intelligence questions, uh, particularly the traces, as everybody else seems to struggle a wee bit with them, and if they just practice them a little bit more, I think you'd find that they're quite easy. So we can see the kind of format that they always appear in here, and it always starts off telling you a little bit about the knowledge base they have, and we can see in this case it's about a multiplayer game, and it stores the various states, uh, facts and rules, uh, in, in the current game state. So you can see here we've got facts about um, the characters, whether they've found certain objects. We've got facts here that tell us weapons that can be used against other characters in the game. We've got facts here that tell us how many life points that particular characters have. And then we've got two rules here, and they both have three sub-goals. So this rule here tells us that a character X is stronger than another character if it has more life points than that character. And this second rule here tells us that a character X can defeat another character Y if this character X has found a weapon that can be used against the other one. So the first question in the model always starts off quite easy. And it's on the lines of suggesting what the matches are or what the solution is to a query. So if we look for has found X portion where this X can be any value that matches at all because it's uninstantiated. So if we look back up for has found x portion y, you can probably see that the has founds always match uh, between lines 1 to 5, but the only case where the portion matches, you can see here, is at line 4. So the solution to this query is x equals druid. Now for one mark, and I always like to just keep track of where the lines are matching just to keep myself in a good habit. So that's one mark, which should be quite straightforward. The second one, state the query required to find the weapons that can be used against the troll. Now the first, that kind of seems a wee bit confusing. But it's just looking to see, right, what weapons can actually be used against the troll. And we can see here, there's actually two that we can use a lance and a jewel against the troll. So the actual query we want to do, the first mark comes from uh, using the correct fact. So as a weapon against, and then we need to insert the facts inside there in the correct order, and it's X is going to be the object you can use against them. So X is a weapon against a troll, is the query we want to do um, for two marks. Quite straightforward again. Next one. Explain how this following query would be evaluated for two marks, and we can see here that it's using negation. Now what negation does is it takes the piece of the query, which is inside the brackets, and evaluates that first. So we can see there is life points for the troll 800. So if we try and find a match for that, you'll notice you can't find a match for that because the troll actually has 1000 life points. So that's evaluated as false. What happens next is, is negation reverses the result of whatever's inside the brackets. So what we are actually trying to evaluate is not false. So if something inside the brackets is false, then negation inverts it. So true becomes false, false becomes true. So that query is actually evaluated as true. And again, the SQA put up the results of, or sorry, the results, the marking schemes for these. So you can check them as you're going over them. So you can see Druid for one mark was correct. Uh, we can see that our query we created as weapon against X troll was correct. And we should be able to see here, uh, life points troll 800 would be false. Well, we said it's a value that's false here. And... Um, we can see here, not life points troll, 800 would be true. So they've kind of not written as much as we have, but we've got the same result because we're talking about um, inverting the value that's inside the brackets. Now, the next question is where you'll pick up loads of marks if you practice these. So part D is to try and find the solution to the query. Um, and let's write it down. Can defeat, and uh, we've got two facts, troll y. Now these are really simple to do if you just stick to some rules. 
if you only concern yourself with one line at a time. So we've got to go and find where can defeat troll Y matches looking from top to bottom. And the first place it matches you stop. So we can see there, I'm going to keep track of it, matches at line 13. And the first thing we're going to do is instantiate any variables we can. So we can see that it matches with troll Y. But down here it doesn't say troll y, it says x, y. And because x can take the value of anything, we can say that x is instantiated to troll because that is one of the facts uh, that the user is searching for in this query. No more instantiations. If something's true, you move forward. And we can see there that we have three sub-goals that we can evaluate. So we move on to the first one first, and the sub goal I'm just going to write it out and forget about everything else. So has found and x z. Now the next thing you need to ask yourself is, do I know what any of these values are? And we do. We know that x is instantiated to troll, but we don't know what z is yet. So once we plug in, once we um, substitute our values, we can. Uh, then go and try and find a match for this. So has found troll Z. So when you look again from top to bottom, stopping where you find the first match, and it matches at line one. So has found troll Z, where Z could be anything. So now it's going to instantiate here. So let's keep track of what we found. So it matches at line one. Now if you're looking ahead, which is fine, you can see it also matches here, but we can't match it at two lines at once. It's it finds the first match for it and then progresses on. So matches at line one. So we can instantiate any values that we find there. So we can say that Z is instantiated to, in this case, dual at line one. And keep ourselves right by saying that sub goal one is true. And the rule is that if a sub goal is true, you move on to the next sub goal. If it's false, that is where you need to backtrack. So if we move on to sub goal two now, and again follow the exact same rule we did um, with the first sub goal, write down exactly what it is and forget everything else for a second. So as weapon against Z Y. Same thing again. We're going to be repeating ourselves a bit now. Is to substitute in any values that we know. So we know that Z is dual. But we don't know what y is still, so we leave that as an uninstantiated value. Once we've put in any of the values that we do know, we go and try and find a match. Again, looking top to bottom, let's find an is weapon against. So that matches at line 6, but it fails because we're searching for dual, not lance. 7, there's a partial match, but again, it's not dual. But you can see here. It's going to match at line 8. And again, keep track of that. Matches at line 8. And again, repeat the process. Have we found matches for anything? Yes. We found that Y is instantiated to troll. And because we found a match, we should keep track of that and say that sub goal 2 is true. Because sub goal 2 is true, we move on to the next sub goal. And again, forget everything we know and write down exactly what it is we're looking for. So not x equals y. Substitute in our values. Now we know from the beginning that x was troll. And we just found out that y has also been instantiated to troll. And again, we need to think about this carefully. So not troll equals troll is true because it does equal it. Then we've got to think about this. Not true is false which is where you'll see if we look back at the question here, we're going to get another mark. And it says in your answer, we'll be given credit for the correct use of backtrack. So at this point, we must backtrack to the last previous true state and check it's there. Sub goal two was the last previous goal state. So we check if there's any other solutions that we can move on from sub goal two now let's look and see. Sub goal 2 is is weapon against ZY. Now we looked for that everywhere. And we matched at line 8. So that fails as well. So we backtrack to sub goal 2 and it fails. So we back to sub goal 1. 
And again, if we look here, we will see that we are looking for um, has found troll Z. And if we look there, it matches at line one, but we need to remember we've already been there, or we'll do the exact same trace again, which is why backtracking needs to keep track of the states it's visited, otherwise it can get stuck in infinite loops. We can see that sub goal one also matches at line two. And again, we just repeat the exact same idea again. This time, because it matches at line two, um, our, our rule, if you look at it there, has found troll Z, it was. Then Z is instantiated to sword this time. And we want to say that because we found a match, sub goal one is true. Because we found a true, we move forward and move on to sub goal two. And again, let's just look back at the rule to remind ourselves, get it correct. And again, write it down, forgetting everything else we've seen. Weapon against um, ZY. And again, same as all the times before, we substitute in the values that we found. So we just found out that Z was sword. We still don't know what Y is. So we turn to our knowledge base and trying to find a match for his weapon against sword Y. Looking from top to bottom, we can see that it matches at line seven. So we'll keep a track of that and our trace matches at line seven and do our instantiations. This time we find that Y instantiated to orc. And because we found a match, sub goal two is true. Because it's true, we move forward to sub goal three. And again, write down exactly what sub goal three is to keep track. So not X equals Y. Make sure it's capitals. And plug in what we know again, substitute them in. So X is troll equals orc. And again, let's think about this. So not and evaluate the piece in the back brackets. Troll equals orc. False. And then again, negation. Not false equals true. So sub goal three is true. Now in this case, we would move on to the next sub goal, but there are no more. So we can summarize it now and say sub goal are all sub goals are true. Therefore, the overall goal is true. Now, if you look back just to check what our original trace was, we can see it was can defeat troll Y. So what can the troll defeat? What characters can the troll defeat? And we found uh, at the end there that Y equals orc will be the result of our query for eight marks. And again, after you've done these traces, check them. And we can just check we've got the right answer just quickly. We can see there that the output is indeed y equals orc. And you can see there's loads of different ways that will accept to write this. I like to write a bit more just to keep myself on track. Uh, let's move on to the next question now. So that's a good eight mark question there that a bit of practice um, everybody's capable of getting. So E part one now. Let's read this question carefully. Uh, to make sure we understand what we've been asked here. So the original software specification states that a player can defeat an opponent if the player has found the appropriate weapon for that opponent and they are stronger than that opponent. So they're trying to combine the two rules that we have here. So they've got the original rule there. And what they're saying is you can add one line to meet this requirement. And if you look back up at our knowledge base, they're saying that you can defeat it if you've got the tool to beat it, if you've got the weapon to beat it, and you're stronger than them. So we need to add this in as the fourth sub goal. So what they need to add in, this extra line you need to add in is stronger than is the predicate rule they need to use. X and Y are the facts that they're going to search for, because if you look here, they're still using X and Y. So this X can defeat character Y if he's got the, the, the weapon, and if X is stronger than Y, you can defeat them. Part two, E part two, the last part of the question, to think this is worth 18 marks or so, this full um, question. State the type of maintenance that this change the software is best described as. So let's think of the different types of maintenance. There's perfective, corrective, and adaptive. So let's work out what ones it can't be. So adaptive maintenance is definitely not that, because adaptive maintenance is when the 
hardware requirements change or the software needs to change to work on a completely different platform for the one it's created on. So it's not that. We know corrective maintenance is where you fix errors and perfective maintenance is where you add in new features to make your piece of software better. Now the clue to this is in the question. It says the original software specification, specification required this. Now if it required it, it means they don't have it. So something that's missing from a piece of software that's got to be there is an error that needs fixing. They've either forgot to put it or in or it's not working correctly. That means it's corrective maintenance to fix something so that it does match the final software specification. We should just check that that one's correct as well. It should, yeah. Corrective maintenance for one mark. Now that question is always in the uh, AI section to link back to your software development. And it's a good idea to know the difference between all those types of maintenance. So I hope that helps clear up some of these questions there. Let's just check how many marks this was. So there's 11, 13, and another three there. So 16 marks it was for the AI traces. And it'll be similar numbers in every year. And they are very, very straightforward once you practice them loads. So get practicing.